Welcome to Good News Week. And the big news? With the long weekend smell of gunpowder and frightened cats still wafting across Canberra, the ACT government is considering a ban on the sale of fireworks. <gasps> Next they'll ban porn and there'll be no reason to go there at all. <laughs> In related news, Adelaide is thinking about making weird murders illegal. <laughs> and China is going to ban fireworks during the Olympic Games which will really put a dampener on the running of the Buddhists. <laughs> Over the Queen's birthday weekend, ACT police received 195 complaints about fireworks. At least they think that's how many it was. They, they couldn't tell because someone put a cracker in the station letterbox. <laughs> when asked how they felt about the ban, locals said, what fireworks? We've been firing distress flares. Take us with you. <laughs> I live there, I know what it's like. But do they really need firecrackers in the ACT when they've got Julia Gillard? <laughs> and that Belinda Neal goes off like a bunger and a dunny. And she... Bang! <laughs> Belinda Neal! <laughs> you may remember a few months ago, we did a story about three right feet in running shoes that had washed up off the coast of Canada. Yeah? yeah. Well, since then, in the same area, they've found three more. Five right, one left, and all adult feet. Because when someone fishes out a child's foot, they tend to give it a kiss, throw it back. <laughs> there are lots of theories. A giant, fashionable caterpillar got caught in a rip. <laughs> Al-Qaeda is testing a new shoe bomb. A man trapped in a glacier with four dead friends and no pen is sending an SOS. <laughs> or somewhere in the Yukon, a lost tribe of Inuit are engaged in a high-risk game of hokey pokey. <laughs> you put your right foot in. Darn it, darn! <laughs> da! Ow. <laughs> Police are focusing on a plane crash in 2005 from which four men are still missing. But that would account for four of the five feet and possibly the left foot. <laughs> which means the plane must have landed on and severed the foot of the fifth victim. <laughs> and the feet didn't turn up until 2007. But you know, Jetstar. And that is the good news. It's good news, Lee. Someone dropped a bomb somewhere contaminating the atmosphere and blackening the sky. It's good news, Lee. Someone found a way to give the running dead a will to live, go on and never die. It's good news, Lee. Thank you, good evening. Tonight, because we're just not stupid enough to host the footy show, <laughs> the golden girl, Claire Hooper. Yeah. The strange and magical stand-up world of Josh Thomas. <laughs> and being deported back to New York in a week. <laughs> One of our favourite troublemakers, Eddie Ift. And they're not afraid to use big words against the lexicon of love, Mikey Robbins. <laughs> She's a director, a writer, and the winner of the Crystal Bear at the Berlin Film Festival for The Black Balloon. Alyssa Down. <laughs> and he's one of the MCs of Canned Laughter at the Horton Pavilion in Sydney on July 4th, raising money for Canteen. It's a great cause. Please go along. The host of Enough Rope, 2025, <laughs> Justin Hamilton. What do you think? You know, that, I, I have to say, Mikey, I find that so racist, saying that uh, you're implying, though, like Denson, like Ben Elton, you, you wouldn't go up to Denzel Washington and say, oh, hello, Whoopi Goldberg. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's racist. I have actually gone up 
to Denzel Washington and said, Woohoo, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, okay. I stand corrected. Yes, but uh, I had and, a and it was Barack Obama anyway. So. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Eddie, no, you are, because Barack Obama is half black. You're right. And he's half white, so he represents Halle Berry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. We've slid straight into wonderfully bizarre racism. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's what we're known for. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably do something before you all go off a bit too early. Claire, Josh, Eddie, come on in. Oh, hmm? oh right. Hairdressers Hairdresser. salon, obviously. Um, Adam oh, Sandler movie. Oh, hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, right, swabbing her up for a bit of a jab. <laughs> in oh, the... <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> High five. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I, I think I got it. Yeah, all right. And I never get them. I'm always wrong, so this is probably wrong. Um, they were, they, okay, here's what it is. Swabbing the head, it's like when they clean your windshield, so it's homeless people. Um, <laughs> Syringe, heroin. Um, so there's a salon that they employ homeless people to and wash they... your head and then they get to do heroin. Uh, the guy don't know why you would have He's the anymore. American that defies the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Is that stupid? <laughs> I told you I wouldn't stop. I'm sorry. Uh, voice. Violent. Um, Violent and stupid. Who would have thought? Uh, <laughs> and amazing. You follow us wherever we go. I think we're still doing the racism material. <laughs> Do we have an answer? Well, did you hear about um, some, some guy opening a chain of hairdressing salons that would also offer a Botox okay. treatment? I want to go there and I want to get Botox in my scrotum. Um, <laughs> it's very wrinkly. <laughs> It's been wrinkly my whole life, too. Like, even when I was young, like when I was five, it was like 55. But the problem is you get an erection, it won't move. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> I think, I'd really like to get my hands on, on my scroll. Oh. <laughs> and then I, I tell you what I'd do. I'd bloody swab it for a jab, is what I'd do with your scrotum. <laughs> Did we get it right? I'm not quite sure what you've said. <laughs> a, a chain of hairdressing salons offering a Botox, Botox. treatment. Why? Thank you very much. Ten points. Let's get it started. <laughs> My brother was telling me uh, the other day That's that he he's quite he wants to get Botox. He's he's 23. Isn't that he's he's gay? But that's, 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 really? Yeah. I Are know, you sure? Thought, but I don't know. What's a 23-year-old boy going to do with? Has he got a premature aging disease? <laughs> no. He, well, he looks because he thinks I should get it because I've got this face that is kind of like stretchy. I can touch my eyebrow to my nose. Um, and, and, <laughs> do can we? Do you want to see it? Oh. oh. And now I'm going to make my eyebrow touch my scrotum. <laughs> well, why don't you make Josh's eyebrow touch your scrotum? <laughs> anyway, if we can get off the scrotum just for a second, that would be great. In Sydney, a chain of hairdressing salons is now offering walk-in, walk-out Botox treatments. What better way to rejuvenate your flat, lifeless hair than match it with a flat, lifeless face? <laughs> Hairdressers are excited about using Botox because it means customers can't look unhappy with their haircuts because... They can't look unhappy. <laughs> and Botox is time efficient. It's just a simple needle, much better than the old procedure of holding someone's face and waiting for the wind to change. <laughs> the kids are going to love that one. <laughs> Mikey, Alyssa. Yes. How interesting was that for you, Alyssa, a sophisticated filmmaker, to be part of the whole scrotum... You Botox. haven't seen my film, have you? <laughs> OK, well, let's put me in my place. It's nothing but scrotums. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Black At all different scrotums. angles. Exactly. Oh, I think, didn't we use yours for one of the pickups? We can. <laughs> and after a bit of bruising, hence the name The Black Balloon. OK. <laughs> Mikey, Alyssa, Justin, fade in. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a good-looking man. Yes. Oh. Very happy. Oh, Skippy Burger. Oh. oh my God! Look at that nose. 
Apparently, Martin Ferguson breastfed a kangaroo back to health. Right. <laughs> that can't be right. And Hugh, Hugh Jackman and Nicole have adopted it. Have adopted it. Yes. <laughs> good, good people. Oh, you know what I think it is. What's that? Well, you know, there's a whole schedule to get done for, for Australia to mm -hmm. come out. The movie. Yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, not the, the movie. Country. Yep. Not the country, the Baz Luhrmann Australia. Oh, yeah. oh, I like the idea of Australia finally coming out. Yes, we're all gay. <laughs> this story is, is he needs a few, you know, he's running behind schedule, he's over budget, mm -hmm. so Martin Ferguson is going to grow the beard, yeah. put on the Akubra, look like Hugh Jackman, mm -hmm. and shoot the pickups. You know so what? this film can get done. If he does that, that's fine, but I don't want to see him do The Boy From Oz. That's going to be ugly. <laughs> when you say, do The Boy From Oz... <laughs> anyway, yeah, can yeah. we... Yeah. So I, I, what I, is I, Mikey? I, okay, uh, Martin Ferguson has just come out and said, because we've had... Such a, a wonderful string of uh, advertising campaigns for this country uh, that hopefully uh, Baz Luhrmann's movie will drive people to Australia. But uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that uh, Ferguson said that the, uh, the movie will highlight places about Australia that we have no idea about, like the outback hmm. and the indigenous culture. And it's like, whoa, wait a second, we've got Priscilla, we've got Crocodile Dundee, Razorback. Remember that great movie? Yeah. Razorback was right there. That, we've already promoted those things. We need to promote other parts of Australia. Well, yeah, exactly. Parts that, yeah, Gosford. Yes. <laughs> Baz, Baz, Luhrmann's, Baz Luhrmann's Gosford. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to stop them. They are right, ladies and gentlemen. Ten points. <laughs> After the Lord of the Rings movies dramatically boosted tourism in New Zealand, our industry is adopting a similar strategy using Baz Luhrmann's film Australia. I haven't seen Australia yet. Are there hobbits in it? Uh, one of the highlights of Australia is the World War II bombing of Darwin. In fact, the campaign slogan's going to be, Wow, it sure is nice to be an island paradise with a very small defence force. <laughs> And not only will it boost our tourism, but the damp crotches of an extra million Hugh Jackman fans could spell an end to the drought. Oh, dear. Uh, yes, I don't think it's actually spell it. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, I'd, li I'd like to see that. <laughs> but after two and a half hours of Australia, you've been here. You already know it's big and flat and hot with crocs at one end, sharks at the other and a four drink limit and within bomber range. You'd want to go somewhere new. <laughs> Uh, so at the end of that absolutely scintillating Jackman-tastic round of Good News Week, the Hooper team are on 10 points, the Robins team 10 points. Up next, our new reality segment, Loser, Celebrity, Dog, Fire. During the break, as we yelled, don't you know who I am? And the waiter said, no. Both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Hooper, Thomas and If have... Straw. <laughs> Lovingly displayed there by, <laughs> by our friend. barrel girl. All I was going to do was this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Claire, Josh just went through puberty. I <laughs> okay, yeah. You guys are clapping and you're not getting the view we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is so much better than the other Easters. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, a microscope. Uh, I have some cutting edge political satire. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, what's in here? Oh, it's Brendan Nelson's approval rating. <laughs> This thing again. <laughs> Wait, I need this. Oh, yeah. You know where that's true? That well, you listen to a story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer, barely kept his family fed. Then one day, he took a bowl of food, and up from the ground came bubbling food. Oil, that is. $130 a gallon. <laughs> And Robin's down, and Hamilton got little blue pills. <laughs> this, this was full when we started the show. <laughs> Muscles. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
Do I have to sit in them? No. <laughs> yes. You know yes, what? You it's, do. A, you know, it's funny. I actually had the same dream last night. <laughs> and finally, this. Oh, I think I've done a hamstring. <laughs> And after Justin's haka, somewhere an all-black is crying. <laughs> to start round two, a game called Bites. Josh, what's the dishy deputy talking about here? I think we'll see unions say that on one side. I think we'll see employers say that on the other side. Uh, what that means for us is we're delivering what we promised, which is a fair and balanced system. Um, she's horrifying, isn't she? <laughs> uh, oh, hey. oh, oh, you wouldn't say that if she was sitting in a bowl of hay, would you? <laughs> Better then. She <laughs> makes Hillary Clinton look like a supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 stay back off. Yeah. Our deputy prime minister is hot. <laughs> well, hotter than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, um, she, um, it, uh, the, she had. They came out with the ten work standards for working people that work. And they're, they're like, they're like ten. They're, they're rules that the people instead of the industrial other thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's correct. It's correct, though, isn't it? Even though I, I read it, but I can't remember. Yeah. But it's along the lines of. It's along the lines. They of did the some new... stuff, and people go to work, but now they can spend more time at home with their babies if they want. But and then what happened was people complained about it. See, the unions complained about it, and the wow. other people, the other people complained about it. It's like Rain Man the musical. <laughs> This story because I remember watching her say that on television and it was like like so many vague statements you know like somebody will say this and somebody will say that and I actually like I genuinely just went Poof, in the brain and I couldn't I I swear I can't remember what it is she's talking about so I'm really glad I can't remember. remember what we're talking about <laughs> whenever, whenever she talks I'm just like hey it's like it's like the Queen of Narnia but <laughs> Take it lightly, Josh. <laughs> oh, too oh. good. Oh. Josh Thomas. Uh, five points. Lovely image to take us. <laughs> Kevin Rudd has unveiled his top ten new rules for employment. The standards include a maximum 38-hour week plus. You have the right to request flexible work arrangements and the right to request solid gold cars. A magic chicken and a talking pig that will fly you home. <laughs> but the opposition says the frequent use of clumsy terms like reasonable and unreasonable make the new standards useless. Kevin Rudd says the opposition's complaints are unreasonable and reasonable definitions will be available in a reasonable time, which any reasonable person can see is not unreasonable. <laughs> Justin, a bite for you from a vanishing species. It is a sad two weeks. I'm uh, in many ways not looking forward to this. Ah, oh, right. That's exactly the same thing I said before I had to go in and review the new Sex in the City. Mm. <laughs> Turns out it only goes two and a half hours, but oh, really? it, it feels like two weeks. No, that's uh, the <laughs> leader. Did you notice that all the ladies went, ah, and oh, all the men... No, and the men went, ah, I would comment on that, but I will never get laid again. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I, 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 I like Sex in the City. I like sex. <laughs> Anywhere. City, yeah. country, gutter. Here. Car. Just call me. You brought that up for me off air, and now you're showing it to Eddie, and I'm a bit you sad. You showed that to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is uh, Lynn Allison, who is the leader of uh, the Democrats, who have turned into the Sydney Kings <laughs> of <laughs> Australian <laughs> politics. <laughs> Disappearing, gone forever, they've only got two weeks left and uh, she's very upset because she can't pass on to uh, a fellow Democrat because um, <laughs> they don't enough. exist. Five points, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For the first time in three decades, the new Senate will not include the Australian Democrats. As a result, they've had to change their famous motto from keeping the bastards honest to can any of you bastards give us a job? <laughs> <laughs> Don Chip must be rolling in his grave, flattening whichever poor woman he was buried with. <laughs> oh, my God. 
my <laughs> living God! There we go. Down. Oh, bang! <laughs> The Democrats will lose everything and the Coalition will lose the balance of power to the Greens. Family first and anti-Pokies crusader Nick Xenophon. I guess it'll be a while before Kevin Rudd can pass his much-touted gay gambling pandas bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's edge of your seat stuff. Who'll get a majority? Who'll form an alliance? Who'll get voted out? Tune in next week to the Big Upper House. <laughs> The Hoopers now on 15 points, Robinson's 15 oh, points. Oh. Up next, up cut. This is the scrambled game called Up Cut. Three headlines from the week on the board to take the points on Scramble. Eddie, if get yourself over there. Now, Eddie, you have no looking on rusty sex bleep outs. Bad cut for a resting life. Um, stop, stop, Doug. You're nervous. Oh, uh, sorry. No, looking. Uh, I have total faith in you, Eddie. Stop, I don't okay. know. Okay, all right, that's not good either. Stop. Uh, arresting. Yeah. Can you guys get more quiet, please? Uh, <laughs> make me feel more uncomfortable and nervous. Last time I was at a blackboard, I was in school and I was failing everything. Um, <laughs> well, hasn't that come in handy? You stop right now. <laughs> you seem to be making it worse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 I told you I'm not good at this show. You're very close. There, there were no headlines this week. <laughs> because you were all binge drinking again. <laughs> and that's the only headline in this country, because that's all you do. Eddie, you're so close. What would Cut go with on there? Think about it. What word would Cut sit next to very comfortably? No, that's not the word. Oh. You are doing something wrong. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Get rid of their life. Get, yeah, get rid of life. life. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Sex life. Sex life. <laughs> stop now. Stop. Walk away. That'll do. That'll do. That's good. That'll do. Okay. That'll do. Why not? Will it? No, it won't actually. That'll, no, will keep it? going. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, what are you doing? Don't listen to the rest of your team. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No! That would have to be the I worst have... example of cut ups we've ever yeah. had. Yeah. yeah. Considering that you had it exactly right before Claire said. Why don't you try something else? <laughs> I want a new team! <laughs> the headlines were Looking bad for sex life No bleep on Rusty I had that And arresting cutouts You had all of them Sadly, not at the end <laughs> It doesn't feel satisfying that he got nothing, does it? So maybe seven points then for trying so hard. Oh, In Vancouver, the police department has come up with a brilliant new way to reduce speeding. Cardboard cutouts of cops pointing radar guns. <laughs> it's the thin blue line. <laughs> Real cops are a bit thicker. <laughs> They're even thinking of using the cutouts to direct traffic. Although they still need a real cop there to move the arms. <laughs> the only problem with cardboard cops is most of them are bent. <laughs> now, Alyssa, the upcut board is all yours. You have slam Senate proves arsenic death kids need breakthrough rehab phone delay. Of course. Hmm, this looks like Amy Winehouse fridge poetry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. I like how you're stalking the board there. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's not so easy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to that. Yeah, ignore okay. that. Ignore yeah. that. Okay. That. <laughs> that. <laughs> that. Senate. Phone. Kids, Kids need, need phone. phones. Kids. Kids need, need phone. rehab. Kids need phones. Phone. Arsenic uh, phones need death. Re oh. Hang on. Death, death proof. Death becomes arsenic. Proves us. Yeah. So exciting. Claire got it. Shum. Shum. You have it, you have it, you have it. You're so yeah. close. Yeah. 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 Whoa. I'm smarter than you. <laughs> I like them dumb. <laughs> I like the way you play the game, Alyssa. <laughs> I forgot I stopped caring about the game about ten minutes ago. <laughs> uh, the headlines were, and she has them all, Senate delay slammed, breakthrough proves arsenic death, and kids need phone rehab. Alyssa down, ladies and gentlemen. In a case thought to be the first of its kind, two children in Spain have been admitted to a rehab clinic for an addiction to mobile phones. It's like Telstra says, the first month is free. <laughs> Their parents originally gave them the phone so they'd always know where they were, but now they've discovered it's much cheaper to just have the children locked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the parents left them at the clinic, it was very emotional. The children just looked at them and said, sideways frowny face. <laughs> Okay, that mob now on a miserable 22 points. That lot on a brilliant 30 points. Coming up, lots of cute animals. It's good news, me. It's good news, me. This is animal magnetism. Claire, you have... Oh, Elissa. Oh. Your film, The Black Balloon. Yes. Uh, won the crystal bear at Berlin. Is it a real bear made of crystal? It looks like it's made of honey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or beer. Beer. Even better. Yeah. And what was that like, uh, showing your film there to the Germans? Did they, they obviously enjoyed it? Yes, and they actually got all the jokes. There's a bit of poo in the film, which was great. Oh, and I think the oh, Germans yeah. love the poo. And a bit of tampon chewing, which went down a treat. <laughs> it sounds like my kind of film. <laughs> And where are you off to next with the black balloon? Um, I'm off, I'm off to Scotland. Right. Timber. That's probably the worst Scottish accent. Here's a hint. When you get there, don't, don't do that. that. <laughs> hey! Oh, no, 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 no. no. no I think I know where you were going and they Chop don't get Chumpy so Chumpy if you can no, no. They, don't, they don't know it. They don't know the reference. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Do it. And then call me. <laughs> uh, so now we've gone... Uh, We'll see who's dumb then. Oh. <laughs> now we've got to uh, so jumpy you can cover with a knife. We're back to animals. Ah. This is animal magnetism, Claire. You have a dog. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, that fella. A chimpanzee. Oh. Oh. Snapping the neck That's of a beautiful. baby. <laughs> 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 and giraffes. Oh, oh, it's throwing up a smaller one. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow they go with adult film star Jenna Jameson. I need to go to the toilet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a rabbi. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> and a cane toad. Can you find the attractions? Um, who goes with who? The, the lovely Poochie there. That's, that's the dog who swallowed a cane toad and he oh, came out... So quick. ...whole. He obviously just licked its head and then got the munchies and went, I'll have the whole thing up. And um, I don't know if that is the actual rabbi, but I'm sure there was a rabbi that declared this week that giraffe meat is kosher. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's great, but how are you going to get that in the deep fryer? Don't well, imagine, <laughs> imagine that drumstick, right? That it... <laughs> That'd be awesome. I don't want to know why the monkey and Janet Jameson go together. <laughs> well, that's, I can only figure it means that the chimpanzee is a dirty little slut. I think... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Eddie, are you happy? Not really, so but... So you don't want to tear it apart and put it back together and lose all the points? Kind of like you just did with my heart. <laughs> Let's see if Ms. Hooper is right. Oh, oh well done. Yes! <laughs> And as Claire informed us, in Darwin, Bella the dog mistook a cane toad for a pie and swallowed it. <laughs> when she threw it up, 40 minutes later, the toad just hopped away. Scientists in the UK have found female chimpanzees have sex with a lot of males as a way to confuse paternity and get support. Is anyone shocked? And in Israel, yes. a rabbi has declared giraffe to be kosher. At last, Jewish people can eat giraffe, just like Jesus did. <laughs> According, <laughs> according to the rabbi, the giraffe is considered ritually pure because it has a cloven hoof and chews its cud. And that's the beauty of eating giraffe. It comes chock full of pre-chewed cud. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is giraffe is not only kosher, but if it's bled properly, it's halal. And if it's mixed with enough cabbage, it's dim sim. <laughs> Mikey, you have a bit of ground to cover up. Your animal magnetism oh. has a piglet, a horse, and a dingo. Oh, oh. fine animal. You also have a scalpel, oh. a test tube. Oh. Oh. What's in that test tube? <laughs> That's not a test tube. Uh, it's meant to be a test tube. That's what it's meant to be. Her budget of the show did not extend to getting a picture of a test tube. We had to draw one in crayon this afternoon. <laughs> I've already been criticised once for talking about the test tube in a derogatory fashion. <laughs> I'm not going to enter the debate. <laughs> Apparently that is what passes for a test tube. <laughs> this has been cut out from the IKEA instruction things. That's the weird bolt thing next to the guy with the Allen key. Looks like a the pen. Number. I was <laughs> thinking, what are you buying at IKEA that comes with test tubes? <laughs> Can. Yes, can we just accept that that is a test tube? <laughs> and finally, yes. a red aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I couldn't help myself. Uh, gum boots, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it. I apologise. Okay, I've got a fair idea on one of these. Could it be a, a dingo took my test tube baby? <laughs> 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 Actually, but, I, but the, uh, that is the one I'm pretty certain of, because actually what I'm assuming we had trouble actually looking at was not the test tube, but what's no, in it, which it's, is yellow. It's wheat. It's it, which, wheat. And they're, they're using dingo urine in Western Australia to keep uh, animals... Possums. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's possums, to keep possums, possums out. Yeah, so... I, and you know what, it's easier to use the test tube rather than just hold the dingo up and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, get, they get very bitey. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the other one, there was a story about the pig in, in, in the gum boots because he had a fear of mud. This is true. It's a true story. He was he he. I think the technical term is mud phobia, and <laughs> he. Uh, so they put gum boots on him, and he started trotting out. And uh, that would then leave us with a scalpel. Ah, there's a horse that's become a surgeon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. See if they're right. They yes. are. Right. Fifteen points. As part of a breeding program, scientists at the US National Zoo reversed the vasectomy of an endangered horse. Uh, as a way to scare off hungry marsupials from reforestation sites, Curtin University in Western Australia is developing artificial dingo urine. And the heartwarming story of the week from the UK, and you're going to love this picture, where a little pig called Cinders has been fitted with gumboots. <laughs> because she's scared of dirt. Yeah, that's cute, but... High heels would be hot. <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home and cleaned the doorknobs. This little piggy had OCD. 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 Wow, a little grunter in fancy footwear. Isn't that the plot of Sex in the City? <laughs> Over there, 37 points. Over there, 45 points. Strange but true is next. It's 
This is the game that's never been nominated for an aria. Strange but true. Claire, Josh, Eddie, your clues were the straws. Yes. I'm not going to sit in it again. Don't look at me so expectantly. <laughs> I've still got itchy bits down my crack. <laughs> That is so going to be in the promo for this show. <laughs> I've still got itchy bits down my crack. I was just hoping it'd be my scrotum. <laughs> the microscope. I got. I got no other. That's that's the end. Don't look what at about? me. Expectantly. Did you want to do the same one again? No, uh, do a do a smutty one now. Uh, I could do like some penis thing. Yeah, uh, go on. Oh, it's gonna uh, work now. Look, it's Paul McDermott's penis. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's rather strange because penis is shaped like a microscope. <laughs> I just don't have the focus adjustment. <laughs> and this. Now you gotta do the knee. Uh, you listen to a story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer, <laughs> barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting for some food, and up from the ground came. Bubbling crude oil, that is. Black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jet's a millionaire. Kim Folk said, Jet, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. Loaded up the truck and the Duke of Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming poles, movie stars, crackheads. Up. Uh, Eddie, if they're bringing some much-needed culture to the show. <laughs> Do we have an answer to the uh, question? I think that it's something about, you know, like a, a, a scientific breakthrough. Um, you know, like finding a bacteria that will make your vegetative matter actually turn into something that we can use as fuel, as a potential solution to the fuel crisis. Okay. I think that that's what the story is about. Okay. Well, I, but it could also just be about hillbillies. So, you know, <laughs> they're making oil. Pretty, with, yeah, pretty, yeah, with, good. With it, yeah. Exactly what she said. But yeah. more from the organisms. Okay, so, so what you're saying, it's a specific that bacteria that they they're using. They eat straw or wood and things like that, and then it's in the and waste they, product yeah, they, of the Yeah, and they poop out. Yeah, they poop out. Well, oh, That's uh, what we're looking for, the poop out. Wait, so you're saying you're going to poop oil? No, 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 no. And then, wait, poop oil and it, it, poop, and then it's going to be oil? We've got to invade something else now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop it there. They have it, more or less, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on. In the US, a renewable petrol company is about to begin trials of a new biofuel made from bug poo. I wonder what they'll call it. Petroleum? <laughs> The company found by altering the genes of tiny organisms that feed on wood chips or straw, they excrete crude oil. Uh, of course it's crude, it comes out of their bottoms. <laughs> it's an incredible discovery. Modified bug poo can make oil, and bug wee makes a refreshing but tangy sports beverage. <laughs> but the breakthrough is causing concern amongst OPEC countries. Many oil producers are shitting themselves. <laughs> but it's not the same. You have to be a bug. Mikey, Alyssa, Justin, you had the pills, the muscles, oh, oh, man, that's, that's rank, and that. Oh, yes. No. We, we, we found that, that maybe the last hacker was, you know, potentially racist. So <laughs> we've, we've, we've decided we've got our own for our own team, okay? Gotta work How did you manage to work this out during the show? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, you're a young man, hard man. In the street, gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place. Sing it! of doing this program, that is the most I have moved. <laughs> uh, and I just have to say, Australia's got talent. <laughs> What's it all about? Um, 
Okay, well, a little bit of pills. Uh, Viagra. Uh, Viagra, obviously. Viagra. Uh, Jesus, you've given him a nudge, McDermott. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's actually holding that desk up. <laughs> Muscles, muscles uh, aphrodisiac? Well, I thought that as well, but these are so, so <laughs> rank. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, wow, you're quite, you can, you're built. You, <laughs> oh, you're built okay. um, uh, it refers to muscles. Obviously, some sort of uh, uh, something Viagra and muscles. Or penis vagina. <laughs> oh, oh, man. If, <laughs> I don't know where your mind's going. And New Zealand. No, if it, yeah. And I don't need Viagra now. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it maybe something about uh, getting getting you know using the heart using the heart to, 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 to fire up rather than yeah, exactly improve your sex life. <laughs> uh, uh, researchers in New Zealand have figured out that there's uh, basically if you if you uh, a, a haka a day keeps the blues away. Basically, if you, if you do the haka. It, it helps with your, your sexual performance. They have it. They have it. Yeah. 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 Everything is connected in the body. It's about building up the pelvic floor muscles. The hucker does that is because you're for, squatting. Is it for and ladies or gents or both? For gents. For, for gents. gents. Yes, so ladies don't really suffer from impotence. No, but... They just suffer from headaches. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <coughs> <laughs> oh, dear wait. God, where am I? Yes. <laughs> yes, men should do pelvic floor exercises similar to moves the All Blacks perform in the haka because they can be as effective as Viagra in curing impotence. There you go. Like men need to be told to get in touch with their pelvis. <laughs> Pelvic floor exercises are a simple process involving contracting and relaxing the muscles in the perineum. Although, to make it more appealing to men, you can do it in a monster truck. <laughs> in fact, they can be done anywhere at any time. I'm doing them right now. <laughs> That little vein moving. Yeah, yeah. The little vein moving. No, 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 Paul. Don't you... call it that. No, 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 no Paul. Your, your, your history is better than mine. Isn't, isn't the perineum where Hannibal took the elephants over? Uh, uh, I wish the path was that wide. Believe in yourself. Certainly something I'm aiming for. I'm still doing it. 40% of the men who tried the exercises regained full sexual function. 30% had definite improvement, and the other 30% are now using their cocks as pogo sticks. <laughs> Still, Viagra is much more convenient. You can easily pop a little blue pill an hour before sex without your partner knowing, uh, but unless you really are a member of the All Black, suddenly bursting into a hucker while you're still at the restaurant probably means your pelvis is going to go home alone. <laughs> the final insult, Dirty Sexy Fast Money, is up next. Comes dirty, sexy, fast, money limping majestically over the horizon. Like Heather Mills. <laughs> <laughs> she's I tell you what, she's still good, isn't she? Oh. <laughs> she's the joke that just keeps giving. <laughs> In Cambodia, a teenage boy is recovering in hospital with heavy strapping around his testicles after being attacked by what? Ah, Eddie. Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Josh. You seem to be mouth agape. And I, I know what it's like. I can't. I. I. I can't. I, you, you'll say it, and I'll cry. I know what it's like. I don't. Yeah. That's not. That's not good enough. I'm going to give you a clue. Ventolin. Uh, asthma. He had asthma on his balls. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did he stick his Something... scrotum in a in a in an into in a ventolin machine? Pufferfish. Puffer... Thank you very Puffer much. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. In Wellington, New Zealand, a cafe was ordered to pay two women a thousand dollars each. Why? Because they that were in Wellington. Yes. <laughs> and we're sticking with that. Anybody? Yeah, there was something no? in the food. Almost. Okay. Something in the wine. Spat in the food. Almost. So spat in the wine. Peed in the wine. Desperation is <laughs> is forcing you to say these things. Anybody know out there? <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Dishwashing weird. liquid was put in the glass instead of wine. Uh, in Illinois, 
A school bus driver has legally changed his name to the words which appear on every American banknote. What's his new name? In God We Trust. Thank you very much. Two points. I, that. Yeah. I got one right. Yeah! We, look at that. We love an underdog, don't we? <laughs> Former Spice Girl, Mel B, is writing a hate song about her ex-lover, Eddie Murphy. Eddie. What's it called? I Hate Eddie. Who is your daddy? It's a play on one of his films. Oh, no. it's a play on words daddy on one Daddy Daycare. Boomerang. Uh, Anybody? Big, uh, Boomerang. Uh, Dr. Cocklittle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Beverly Hills Cock. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cock, he has it. <laughs> So in the joust tonight, Claire Hooper, Josh Thomas and Eddie Irv scored a valiant 53 points. <laughs> All right, that's it. Cut down by Mikey Robbins, Alyssa Down and Justin yes, Hamilton on 63 points. Ten.com.au slash GNW is where to go if you want to see special bits, book tickets for our studio audience. Or vote Belinda Neal into the Big Brother house as an intruder. <laughs> so we say evil thoughts will make your child a baby cow and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. <laughs> Federal Parliament will rise for the winter recess thanks to their new pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson Mandela will celebrate his 90th birthday at a concert in London. Sadly, Pink won't be performing her new hit, Get Apartheid Started. <laughs> The inquiry into the 2007 New South Wales election will find that it took place last year. <laughs> and, and in Melbourne, Jeff Fennick will take on Azuma Nelson in the rematch of the week. Seriously. You know, if I wanted to watch the elderly punch each other up, I'd slip ice into my grandparents' Horlicks. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> <laughs>